Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being here with me live in the Zoom room and thank you for being on the live stream. My name is Elizabeth with The Sovereign Way and this is a powerful allegory that I've written for you about transformation. And it's relevant to you whether you are creating a new enlightened life for yourself or solving an impossible problem or launching your work of passion. Your personal transformation is a unique beautiful and holy project. Perhaps you're ready to turn your overcoming into a service of, huma of humanity, service for humanity. In fact, I know that that's what you're ready for. I know that you finished digging around in the shadow waters, healing the past. I know you're ready now to make that final breakthrough into an altogether new life. I think you've got an idea that's ready to be realized. But I'm gonna tell you what, what I know also, which is that you need help across that spiritual threshold. Because guess what? We're not designed to do it on our own. So this little story that I'm sharing today helps to shed light on some of the energetics that are involved in your transformation. And guess what? It actually, the story comes with a handbook as well, a handbook to guide you through some simple thought experiments that just help to train the mind and the vibration for expansion. So if you want that handbook, let me know and I'll send it to you. But now we begin. So are you sitting comfortably? Yes, are you ready? Then let's start the story. Now this story begins in a little pond in the clearing in the woods, quite close to where you live. And the surface of this pond is a shimmering reflection of the world all above it. And the image is only interrupted by occasional lily pads and blossoming lilies and the water ripples that extend from dragonflies dipping into the water surface from time to time and then back up again. But the surface of the water is actually irrelevant for now. It's what's going on beneath the surface that's so very, very magical. Because deep underneath that surface, in the pond, swim millions and millions of little lava, which in biology are called nymphs. The dragonfly lava are called nymphs. And some of these nymphs swim very close to the bottom. In fact, that's sort of where they start their life cycle, close to the bottom of the pond where the water is thick, and muddy and gloopy with sulfury stuff of yuckiness that's been hiding under the bottom of the pond and from time to time belches up and out into the water, which is otherwise very pure and clear. I mean, as you can see in this pond, the closer to the bottom, the more condensed all of that residue of pond life is. And some of the nymphs swim closer to the middle and sometimes they pop down below and then up a little bit to cleanse. So they have an experience both of the clarity and purity of the true water, but also of the thick gloopy density of the bottom. And other nymphs swim closer to the surface where it's quite sparkly and light. And when the grasses and stalks that grow in the pond, you know, the reeds and the willows that grow in the pond rise up and out of the pond and into that mystical dimension above. And you are one little nymph. And quite a while ago, you felt that you were becoming something. You felt that you should start swimming closer to the surface. And you notice that the more you swam in the clearer water, the better you felt. You felt more like you knew what you are. And there were others before you that had done the same and the others around you as well. But experiencing this for you, yourself, is something very special, altogether different and not anything that you can understand from what others around you might have regurgitated about their experience. It's entirely unique to you. And you told the other nymphs in your old swimming grounds that something was changing within you, that you were becoming something. The ones in the denser layers of water, you told them what you had discovered. 
And sometimes they were inspired by you, even though what you're describing was very different from what they knew about the pond. And perhaps some of them started noticing that even though, even though the, the pond itself is the same, the pond itself hasn't changed, something's very different about experiencing that same pond from this new place, from this new vantage point. And perhaps those around you who saw you started feeling a little bit better too, even though what they were experiencing was nothing like what they'd understood from your descriptions. Each experience of ascension in the great pond is completely unique. And some of these nymphs, the ones who swim closer to the bottom, some of them were very reluctant to listen to what you were saying. Some of them were suspicious. They pointed out that there's nothing wrong swimming in the sludgier layers of water. This is how it's always been. It's a natural part of being in an ecosystem that involves the debris of dirt and slimy scum from pond life settling into the bottom and belching up all over you. And when that sludge belches up, you get covered. And that's just the way it is. And that's, you know, it's kind of completely true. The pond is just as worthy and divine from that lower angle as any other. And it's perfect for the creatures that live there but not for creatures that are in the process of becoming something else. And there's another little group of nymphs near the bottom. And these are the ones that had, even though they had adapted to that thick and gloopy vibe down there, they also had a strong inner feeling that they were becoming something else. Even though they didn't know what it was, they felt that it wasn't this. And they started to realize that this isn't the whole truth about the pond. And perhaps they became afraid. Perhaps they started watching you as you swam a little higher, thinking, I wish we could swim up there. And maybe you saw their pleas and maybe you swam down to help them rise. And perhaps you submerged yourself into thicker and denser water than your new light body can tolerate. Maybe you wanted to soothe and encourage the ones who didn't think they could swim any higher. But what you didn't know was that you weren't quite ready for that because you're still becoming too. So you started feeling bogged down and dirty and exhausted from trying to drag all those little bottom nymphs up. And you felt hopeless from time to time. How can I swim close to the surface like I know that I want to when there's so many down there who can't, you prayed that I can't carry them all. I can't, I can't, I can't justify my own becoming if everyone else can't have what I have. I can't justify reaping the rewards of my own transformation. I can't justify receiving the grace and the miracles, the extraordinary life that's awaiting for me. I, I can't justify receiving that until I fixed everything down here first. It isn't true, by the way. But you thought it was. And from time to time, you managed to carry a few of those bottom nymphs to higher and lighter layers of pond water. But it seemed as though, unless those bottom nymphs learned for themselves how to swim in a different density, they just end up sinking back down anyway. We do have to adapt to increasingly lighter and lighter environments. Your mind needs time to adjust. Your vibration needs time to adjust. Your action patterns and behavioral patterns need time to adjust. And each new layer of, of lightness and some of these bottom nymphs, because they saw that you were interested in helping them rise, clung onto you with their tentacles digging into you. To other surface nymphs who kept going down into the denser layers of water to help. And it didn't always end well. Some of them never came back up. 
but you know you have to let go. You already know. And it's safe and it's okay and it's holy to let go. Even though your heart breaks a little bit as you leave the bottom, the transformation inside of you calls you up. And the resistance that you put up against that call gets painful. That tension gets painful. The, the compression, the compression of your resistance against the natural call, it's unsustainable. And you love your bottom layer nymph friends and family, but you must return to the waters that are clearer and lighter and full of the sparkle of another dimension, full of that promise, rich with that promise. And you have to do that even if they won't come. You are becoming something. And, and, you, uh, and this dragonfly nymph that is becoming a dragonfly that is going through a natural metamorphosis can no longer deny the call. You have to honor it. And so you look up and you see how higher surface nymphs move in yet lighter waters and you learn from them. You receive their transmission. You embody what they've already adapted to. And so you call down to the lower layer water nymphs. You call down to them and you say, look up. Look up and become like this. Just look up, keep looking up. And you notice that you aren't leaving anything behind really, because even as you change, you're still the sum of everything that you'd ever been. You're still carrying with you the honor and the nobility of everything that you've ever been. And as an, as an alchemy is happening inside of you, an alchemy that is greater than that sum. Yes, you are all the things that you have become. You are all the things you've ever been and you are greater so much greater and the relief that you feel with every inch that you rise in this pond is like a wave of peace you surrender to the inner agency that is calling you into becoming and i promise you are restored tenfold every ounce of energy you expend on that transformation but even as you've risen in the pond, even up there in the lighter waters, you still don't know what's happening or what this movement was inside of you. But once you'd let go of the resistance to it, it's such a natural and easy unfolding that it's as if it's doing itself, even if you don't know the way forward. It's just ongoing. And yet you couldn't quite tell which way to go or how to focus your attention. And even though it is ongoing, your experience of that going can be as agonizing or as liberating as you like. And really, even in the lighter layers of water, you can be as confused and as, as, as full of lack of direction, lack of clarity, as the bottom layer nymphs are in theirs. Although no longer as afraid as you had been when you swam down below in the dark. And then you remember to look up. And now you're looking at the strange surface. Now there's no one else to copy anymore. Now you've got all the way to the strange surface, that wobbly veil that shimmers with an indescribable light from some strange source. And even though you've seen it many times before, this time you watch. You try to make sense of that light and the texture and the movement on that strange veil. You're much more intentional now with the idea of piercing that veil and you're trying to use all of the faculties you've, you've used before as a nymph. You're trying to put these to use to break the surface. You're trying to break through the surface of the strange veil, pressing up against it, looking for opening, feeling so confused that 
You know you're being called through it, but there's no apparent way to cross this threshold between your current experience and what lies beyond. This, this is a threshold you cannot cross by yourself. No matter how hard that dragonfly nymph tries to move through the surface of the water, it will fail. It cannot do it by itself. It is not designed to. Stillness. You see something on the surface, something that plays at the strings of the harp in your soul song. A shape coming into view, a shape that you remember. Dragonfly. I am dragonfly. You can imagine being one of these little surface nymphs right under there in the water because that's exactly what you are and you've held your position just for long enough that what is already metamorphosized on the other side of that veil has come into perfect clarity and focus and it has stirred a remembering in your cells. I know I am that I am. but you still can't break through the surface. You look around at the other surface nymphs. Some haven't seen it. Some know that there's something going on in that veily surface thing, but they can't quite stop analyzing it and comparing themselves to it, trying to think about what it means and why they're so different from its image. They're still looking down at the bottom layer of sludge nymphs, feeling guilty about having been that, ashamed of their nymphanity. <laughs> Not quite ready to let that shape come into perfect focus, even outside the limitations of what they know. Some of them are sitting there staring at the shape, waiting for it to swoop down into the water and hoist them all up through the surface into the mystical dimension beyond. They think the transformation needs to be something as unlikely as that when actually the true transformation is very, very simple. You've noticed that some of the other nymphs around you has also recognized that shape. And like you, they know I am that I am. And you make eye contact and you meet their eyes. And we know together. And little by little, the unfolding that is happening anyway reveals what we need to know in the next moment and in the next moment and in our own time, sometimes together and sometimes in solitude, the little nymphs find their way to a stem of a reed or a blade of grass, a flexible yet strong structure that grows all the way up from the bottom, piercing the surface and leading the little dragonfly nymphs up and out. This is the only way a dragonfly nymph goes through its final metamorphosis and becomes a dragonfly. The nymph cannot break that surface without a strong, malleable, naturally growing structure. A structure made from the natural and spiritual laws. And when you arrive at its robustness, when you arrive at the, the, the strength and the power and the flexibility of this structure, you know it's a thing to follow to become what is coming. And with gentle and brave steps on this safe path, you move through the veil. You shed the skin. You shed the excuvia, it's called in a dragonfly. But you don't have to work to shed the layers of the past. 
You don't have to consciously reprogram your thoughts, your feelings and your behaviors. That happens naturally when you stop resisting and grow into what you are. You don't need to keep digging around in the gloopy, gloppy, murky shadow waters trying to heal the past. The nymph sheds the excuvia right there at the surface. And you are a dragonfly. Now you know that you can never go down to the bottom layers ever again. But because you've seen that transformation happens anyway when you allow it, you know that all you had to do to help the ones who are coming along behind you is to be dragonfly. And then they too recognize their greater self in the veil of their consciousness and find a way up. So this is the most important life mastery for you to embody at this spiritual threshold, this pivotal spiritual threshold that you are at right now. This is the number one life mastery you need. Remembering. Remember that you are becoming. Remember that it is safe to let go. Remember that it's happening for you anyway, because it's written in your DNA. It's your destiny. Remember to honor your own truth and becoming first so that others can see your demonstration and learn from your way. And remember, you are not designed to cross that threshold alone. You do need a strong organic structure to guide your steps through the surface, through that threshold, and let your own inner movement do the rest. That's how you liberate all that creative energy that you're currently wasting, trying to force something that happens gracefully and easily if you let it. Remembering is the first of eight life masteries in the sovereign way. And the sovereign way is the blade of grass that will lead you through the surface and into your next era of becoming where you will be dragonfly. This is an incredible time to join us. We are launching a three month spiritual accelerator program and this is perfect for you, especially if you're ready for a break, breakthrough and a new life. You'll join a small group with a potent intention. We are going through the surface of the water. During the next three graceful months of spiritual overhaul, you're going to rebalance your consciousness and your energy field. You're gonna experience tremendous forgiveness and release. And we're going to use the ideal balance of surrender and mastery to follow spiritual law, to retrain your mindset and your vibration in a very natural and organic way. This is the blade of grass that leads you through the surface. You're going to receive training in miracle work and in the healing arts. And this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get regular private sessions, personally designed assignments and accountability partnership, weekly group teachings, community, live lectures, group coaching, access to an immersive library of video resources and ongoing prayer and healing for this powerful time in your life. So take action, join us now, and reach out to us on Facebook or YouTube or on our website, which is www.sovereignsolutions.day. That's D A Y. It's breakthrough time. So come and join us. We are so excited about what you're up to. Thank you for being here. <laughs>